Okay, so hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to present my uh, research paper, which is entitled uh, Reduce Plus Plus Unsupervised Content Based Approach for Duplicators of Detection in Search Engine. And this presentation and research paper has been prepared uh, in collaboration between the Lebanese University and the University of Applied Sciences of Western Switzerland. The presentation or the agenda presentation will be as follows. Uh, first of all, we're going to start by the introduction and then we'll mention some related work in this field. And after that, we will discuss uh, in details our methodology that we have uh, expressed in this research paper. And then we will illustrate the experiments and the results. And finally, we will uh, show the conclusion and we will discuss some future works and potential solutions for future works. For the introduction, this paper is for uh, in the context of uh, social networks, uh, uh, in particular search engines. Uh, we know that search engines currently are uh, the most leading website services in the world. Uh, anybody can access them without any subscription and free, and uh, they are open for all the people in order to benefit from their services and search for information in, in an easy and quick manner. Uh, Every institution used actually search engines, such as industry, educational institutions, and more and more. So in this context, we can see that uh, uh, search engines also have uh, some, uh, some problems like uh, information retrieval problems if you want to retrieve certain information. So not all the time we can find our needs. And this is actually, due to a set of problems and uh, limitations of these search engines, as well as low quality search. Actually, end users cannot be able to detect that uh, certain results retrieved by search engines has, has low quality. So in this research paper, we mainly focus uh, to address some problems of low quality results in search engines. So usually search engines works as uh, work as websites on the internet. So uh, you, you usual users, if they want to access a certain search engine such as Google, uh, so they simply type the address of the website and then click enter and everything will be fine. Okay. okay. So this is usually the process. The process of search is usually composed of two steps, just typing the query and then clicking enter and finally you will get the results back. One of the popular, popular search engines currently in the world are uh, on, on top of them is Google. And in addition to another services that provide search uh, service in the world, but usually you know that the Google is the most popular one, okay? So once the user enter the query, he will get a set of results, and these results are a set of web pages. And each web page contains uh, a content, which is composed like the website structure, the textual content, the links, images, videos, and so on. In this uh, context, we can see here our motivation derived from this uh, diagram. So usually, when when we type a query and search for a particular information, we'll get results that contain uh, redundant information. So like, like plagiarism or copy paste data inside each website. So at this thesis, mainly in this paper, sorry, we are going to address this problem. So a very similar pages must be grouped uh, to, to each other, to each others uh, and must not be separated or uh, treated individually. This problem is referred as to website the duplication or web page duplication. So the data inside each web page is duplicated in other web pages. And this is actually a critical issue in search engines that affect the quality of the retrieved results and consequently the overall quality of the entire search engine service. If you can see here, if we have two pages, that share common content, the objective here is to detect that these two pages contain 
the same information. And this is, of course, can be done via or by using similarity matrix or similarity algorithm that can detect this similarity between two contents. So in particular, the contents that are commonly uh, similar across different web pages is textual content. So usually the websites copy textual contents in order to share easily and quickly uh, on their web pages. And then on will be appeared inside the search engine result set. So in this case, we are focusing on detecting the text similarity between these two web pages. Okay, in order to detect the text similarity across two or more web pages, we have two different approaches or two different methods. The first one is the lexical, lexical approach, which is a syntactic based approach. And the second one is the semantic approach, which is uh, to try to uncover or understand the semantics behind the text. So uh, probably the whole meaning or the sentence structure or the dependencies and so on. So this like the lexical one, which try to uh, fix uh, the, the, the common words and the similarity and the traditional uh, uh, comparison between different texts. So in order to uh, solve or address the problem of redundant content across of pages efficiently and accurately, we divide the page into uh, different structures. So the first one, if we can see the title, first of all, because as we know that every web page has a title and none of the web pages that exist on the internet is without a title. The second one is the banner or usually like the, the logo or the menu which appears on the top of each web page. And the third one is the links. As you know, that every web page contains set of links probably appear at uh, like the, 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 the panels or the footer or the header, etc. And finally, certain navigations. So in the, from this background, you can start inspired something that can be helpful in order to find a certain solution for redundancy in web pages. So here we go. So we divide the page in, uh, actually we divide all the pages uh, into a unified common structure that's presented here in the right side diagram. So we have uh, mainly the website title of each web page and we have the page title and Probably we can find some subtitles inside each web page, uh, texts, and like the body, which is labeled as text three. And the, finally, we have the links of each web page that appear at the foot of usual. The proposed solution is named reduce plus plus, which stands for result duplication detection in search engines. So this approach is mainly composed of threefold contributions. The first one is multiple text representation. So we are able to represent multiple texts and handle them at the same time. The second one is content-based similarity computation. So we find the similarity based on the content. So if we have an image, we leverage like an image a similarity uh, uh, algorithm. If we have text, we leverage the corresponding or the compatible text similarity metric and so on. So it depends on the content. And finally, also in order to enhance and to get uh, more efficient results, we use uh, the graph-based clustering algorithms in order to cluster uh, redundant content uh, alongside in, in, in individual clusters. So these are the main contributions. If you want to check the related work in this context, uh, I will not mention them into details because they are written inside the paper. Uh, we have uh, text similarity. There are of, uh, papers that work on text similarity. The second one is graph similarity because you know that uh, in our work we are using graph similarity. Uh, the third and fourth one is text to graph, and uh, th these are all. Okay. 
But actually, in, in all this related work, there are a lot of limitations, drawbacks, and challenges that have not been addressed or uh, our, our methodology composed of mainly four key components. The first one is a data collection. We collected data from uh, search engines and in particular the Google search engine. But of course, later on, we can collect, collect data from other search engines. The second one, second component is feature engineering, because as you know, in feature engineering, we have to extract certain features in order to perform the clustering or the classification. The third one is the similarity computation, which is the uh, core uh, component of our uh, approach, which finds the similarity across uh, different contexts inside different pages. And the final one is the clustering. So once we are done with uh, steps one, two, and three, we want to make different clusters or generate different clusters uh, that contain in, in each cluster we have a set of similar web pages. So let's start uh, them one by one. So this is in general the main uh, architecture, and these are the four main phases highlighted in each, uh, like in, in this diagram. First of all, uh, we have the uh, data collection. We start by set of queries and we get the results, and then we perform pre-processing. And in step number three, we perform the similarity algorithms. Okay, uh, like for, for the similarity algorithms, we have text content, links, website titles. For each one, as you know, we uh, employ the corresponding or the compatible similarity algorithm. And finally, we'll end with a final similarity score. This similarity score or this final similarity score will be uh, as an input for step number four, which can be helpful uh, for clustering phase. The data sets in our uh, approach is coming from Google. We uh, extracted, uh, we, we have uh, applied a set of queries on Google and we search for these queries in order to get results. But as you know that on Google, uh, uh, there is no API for uh, search engines. Actually, there is an API, but it's paid, so you have to subscribe. But in our case, we have used the traditional web uh, scrapers such as Selenium on top of them that can help us extract and scrape all the results coming from our uh, tested queries. So we actually try to validate our approach on cross domains such as healthcare, history, science, and other general domains. So. Uh, as well as we can extend these domains to cover more and more topics. As well as our approach is multilingual, so we are able to prove that we can find a similarity across different languages, in particular French, Arabic, and English, but we are not able to extend these languages, only three. So it's fixed to three languages. In total, we have run 150 queries that results in total 14k roughly 14k rows so the row actually corresponds for the result inside each query so in order to compute the similarity so first of all we have the content we have the content guide and we have the recommend related content and finally we have the main content if we can see these are considered as features of our a clustering algorithm. So these are four features in our clustering algorithm. For the pre-processing, we have uh, two uh, phases in the pre-processing, one for syntactic and the other one for semantic. For the syntactic one, we have uppercase, like uppercase characters must be turned on uh, into lowercase, also known as key characters must be removed because all these affect the efficiency and accuracy of an algorithm, actually, not only our algorithm. And uh, for the semantic uh, pre-processing, we have syntactic uh, similar, sorry, syntactic pre-processing. We want to remove the stop words. Uh, foreign characters must be also uh, deleted 
also text limitization, like turning the text into originality and so on. So for the similarity algorithms, if you want to, to compute the similarity, let us start by this uh, website structure. So for website title or page title, so these are like similar in terms, in terms of the size of the text. So usually like the title of the website, like three, two, five keywords, or the page title usually like five, six, maximum like 10 tokens, uh, we leverage a similar metric. I will show you on the next slide which a similar metric. Uh, for another uh, content like paragraphs that compose of multiple sentences, we employ another similar metric. And for links also that compose of like one word, or usually we also employ a particular similar metric. For the page titles, we use uh, the cosine similar metric, which is based on vector space model that usually compute the angle between two documents. It represents text inside documents and the space and try to find the angle between uh, these two documents and then finding the cosine of this angle. For the links, we use the jacquard similarity. Of course, we have tested a lot of uh, examples in order to decide which similarity metric we are going to use. So for links, we use the jacquard similarity, which is based on usually set theory, okay? Uh, and actually for subtitles, the same algorithm also has been used. For the body text, we use the bag of words representation algorithm, okay, which is based also uh, on the vector space, similarly to the uh, vector space model and cosine similarity. And this is an example that show uh, how the bag of words uh, performs in the space. Okay. And finally, we use also for the body text graph uh, similarity in order to prevent the inherent structure. So usually the graph similarity is used in order to uh, be able to find the semantic similarity in order to extend the previous algorithms and in order to enhance and get better accuracy. So these are the uh, overall and eventual similarity algorithms employed in uh, our overall reduce plus plus uh, method. So we can see cosine similarity, jacquard, and cosine plus a graphlet sampling kernel, which is a graph similarity algorithm. The final similarity computer given the following formula. It's the overall similarity between the product of the weight of each content so we have assigned a weight for each content so for instance we have assigned the largest weight for the textual content or for the body compared to uh, less important uh, content such as links or other uh, parts of the web page uh, multiplied by the similarity result of the uh, specific content. So this is the final similarity score. Starting from this similarity score, we have discussed the weight. So for website title, we have assigned 2.5% of importance. And I will not discuss all the weights, but I will mention only the most important one, which is the body. So for the body, we have assigned 40% or 0.4% uh, out of one uh, weight for the body or the content of the web page. Finally, we'll add this weight will be, or this final similarity score will be an input for our uh, clustering algorithm. So this is the clustering algorithm, which is used on graph-based method. It generates like different clusters. And inside each cluster, we have the similar web pages. Okay, so for instance, let us consider that P1, uh, P2 to Pn are web pages, and we have different clusters. So for instance, in, in this cluster, we have like this one, can share, okay.
Okay, uh, this cluster contains zero pages. Why? Because this this zero pages, given the formula in the previous slide, tells us that these zero pages have similar content and so on. We have uh, for this reason we have to group them inside one cluster. For individual uh, pages for each cluster, so in case of P6 and P9, so P6 and P9 are unique pages that does not share common content or similar content with different or other web pages from the results from a query. Okay, now I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk about the results and experiments. Okay, for the results and experiments, uh, is our algorithm generate good clustering results or not? So uh, we start from initial data coming from different uh, queries uh, applied on Google search engine, and we ended with uh, different cluster data. Okay, this is the main objective. Uh, for external validation of our agglomerative clustering algorithm, we have tested mainly four metrics. The first one is the homogeneity completeness. The second one is mutual info score. Third one, RAND index. And the fourth one is the FMS score. Usually these are used in agglomerative clustering evaluation. If we can see here, we have uh, successfully maintained stability for our uh, algorithm across all uh, similarity metrics, sorry, uh, evaluation metrics. So we can see that the stability is re remain 1.0 as well as we have uh, maintained performance, uh, high performance as well. For the internal validation, we have tested usual, uh, mainly uh, three evaluation metrics. Uh, the silhouette coefficient, the Kalinsky score, and the DBS score. We can see here if we cut the, 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 the graph at 0 0.70 or 0 0.65, we can get like 0 0.12 score value for uh, the green line, 0. Uh, like 0 0.15 and 0 0.25 score for the red line. So also we have generated high and good uh, scores in, uh, in comparison with these internal validation metrics. So and in total, the score is 0 0.67. So as we stated in the introduction that our objective is to reduce the number of web pages given a query on a particular or on a certain search engine. So this is, uh, the similarity threshold here presented uh, in comparison with the uh, reduction percentage. So here we have different similarity thresholds. So, you know, if we set up the threshold, for instance, 0 0.71, so we reduce the number of pages by 51%. Or if we uh, put uh, the similarity threshold 0, 0 0.9, so we reduce the number of pages by uh, 0 0.6 so as the number so sorry as the similarity uh, threshold increases uh, the number of web pages will be uh, decreases so these are like uh, the thresholds that have been chosen in our algorithm uh, the similarity threshold chosen is 0 0.67 and the web page reduction is result is 61.2 percent so 61 percent of the web pages have been eliminated from the results given a search engine particular query these are some results uh, numerical results uh, so we can see here quantitative analysis for different queries so let us take for instance symptoms of depression this query is uh, run on google in english language we can see that before uh, applying our reduced plus plus algorithm, there are 96 web pages uh, as a result. Okay, of course, we get millions of results, but we only uh, address the first 96 web pages. Among these 96 web pages, uh, we still have only 13 web pages given the threshold in the previous slide, which is 
67 and the reduced number of web pages is 86 percent so you see like if we if you click usually on the links if you can try clicking on the links by uh, writing the square symptoms of depression you will see like redundant content across different websites despite that these websites are different okay and we have also you can check also other queries in uh, french and uh, arabic languages for the conclusion and the future work so in this paper we presented uh, a content type based similarity computation method in order to reduce the redundancy uh, in web page results and in order to increase the quality of search engine results uh, we prepare our data set by uh, ourselves we extracted the data and prepared the data set we uh, perform the pair sorry we conduct the pairwise similarity uh, we have addressed multiple contents of each web page we have employed uh, multiple and different similarity algorithms and finally we are able to generate different clusters that contain uh, different similar web pages so in average we are able to reduce the number of web pages by 61.2 percent because uh, this 61.2 percent contains redundant and similar uh, content our the main implication of this uh, method reduce plus plus actually can be helpful or beneficial for science domains for practice as well for science we can reduce uh, the redundancy okay and for uh, practice we can uh, generate high quality search uh, results uh, in google and in other search engines uh, despite all the mentioned uh, achievements we still have a number of limitations uh, we did not test our method on other search engines we don't know we can we cannot uncover uh, that other search engines also suffer from redundancy problems uh, alike uh, the, the one in google uh, but i think that uh, yes uh, other search engines also they suffer from the same problem multimedia content uh, was not addressed in this uh, paper like images videos uh, photos as well you can actually these contents are quite important and they can tell us that uh, web pages also are similar so our main focus was on the textual content and finally uh, advanced weighting methods uh, have not been used we have just assigned random weights or uh, like factual weights we did not perform uh, or utilize any algorithm that can tell us the accurate weights so this is actually if we can apply in the future like uh, weighting algorithms we can adjust the weight scores and the results also uh, eventually will be changed as well so thank you for uh, listening for the presentation and if you have any questions